into my basketball. Every time I rock, man, this is how we rap and rock. Peace to my man. Now we got the camera out. Every time I spit it, cross over the all right. Hello, everyone. This is Josh, also known as Yashu, and you're tuning into episode 42 of the TOY Talks podcast down in 1990 studios, as always, too. Like, you'll always notice the location here and there. You'll see it, like, on all platforms, Buzzsprout, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and much more. What more can I say? How's everyone doing today? Like, hope we're doing all right, too. And, you know, let's get it started right here. I think with this artist, too, like, one of the most rising artists in the Toronto music scene right now Opened up for Tony Ayo, Lloyd Banks. He's about to open up for Dave East within the next uh, coming days. A dope track record, you know, worked with like Up Next uh, with on one of their projects too. A lot of viral hits too, like Bop, Bop, Bop. Um, also too, like Calm and like, you know, Move Your Hips too recently too. So you'll see him at every show. You'll see him at every freestyle too. And, you Come know, on. I had to get him right here. You know, YBA from the J. How are you doing today, man? Come on, man. Grr, bow, bow, bow. You know what it is, man. Hey, man, man, I'm happy, you know, I'm outside, you know what I'm saying? I'm here with you guys, you know, we got this cool ass interview coming on. Yeah, so, man. yo, let's talk to the people, yo, let's let them know what's up. Let's let them know, let's get, let's let them get a little familiar with me, you know, yeah, let's man. let them know what's up. I mean, you know, your life story is like already like documented uh, too for a bit in a couple of interviews too, but like it, it'll be more in depth, like right here too, you know. Um, But yeah, man, like, you know, I've seen you make moves like all over like the city too and all that, like. I don't see that with like a lot of like Toronto artists too nowadays, but like with you, with Team Real Estate, you know, like just with that team right there, you know, it's just up there right now, you know? Yeah, man. Honestly, <clears throat> we really doing it right now, man. Like, like, let me be real with you. Like 11 months ago, I really wouldn't think that I'd be right where I'm at right now. You know what I'm saying? Sitting in this chair, even just speaking to, you know, the people and shit. But yo, like, it's a lot of work and effort that was putting behind it. A lot of, you know, dedication, a lot of passion. And fuck, like... Yo, with the outstanding team that I got behind me, with the amazing guidance that I got in this music industry, trust me, I think it's it's I see I see something a foundation really forming out here, and it's gonna be something crazy. We're gonna you know there's an end goal, and the end goal is to obviously you know really make an impact on this Toronto music scene because right now as you know it's super negative. You know there's a yeah. super wave of negativity and violence right now being yeah. swept all over our yeah. city. So to get a new kind of genre of music in there. Switch up the flow, yeah. you know, and get the people kind of yeah. veered off a little off the negativity, a little yeah, bit more man. positive and shit. But yeah, man, like, yo, but again, with an outstanding team, yeah. anything is possible, man. Yeah, for real, man. for real. So shout out Team Real Estate 247 because, fam, without her and without my other people, them, you know what I'm saying? Tsh, wouldn't be here. Real shit. That's nah, a fact. I got you, man. Not 100%, you know, like, we'll definitely document, like, a lot of stuff, too, like, later on. Uh, but, uh, you know... Everyone wants to know like the life story like a little bit too. Like I've seen like a couple of interviews too, but I want to make it like more in depth and like in that sense too. But like everyone knows that you know you grew up in Jane and uh, Wilson uh, for a bit. So growing up there, like what was like the environment like for you growing up? So yo, honestly, like not even just Jane and Wilson, dog. Like all over the Jane, to be honest. Like I just I, Jane and Wilson's were like my main area. You know what I'm saying? Like right, my stomping grounds at the end yeah. of the day, where I was you know like born and raised type shit. But reality is, I have my parents and my family's. I've been all over the Jane. I've got family all up along, south, down to north, up top, down whatever the fuck. The whole strip, bro. So it's like for me, I cannot. I don't got time for no politics. I don't got time for whatever's going on out there or whatever. But yeah. what I do know is that I'm from an area where the reputation is strong, and I feel that the people them that are living on the strip right now do need someone else new to look up to. That's really gonna kind of give them that that kind of confidence yeah. themselves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because fuck, like, a lot of the people that are coming on now, you know, they're putting in the work, they're putting in dedication, but reality is, like, it's it's not all positivity. It's not, you know, stuff that we can play on our daily clubs yeah. type thing, you know? Yeah, no. Nah, but, nah. um, again, yeah, man, like, all over the Jane, from born and raised. So yeah, it's, well. like, that's why, like, the origin of YBA and all that, that's literally yeah. up and down, family yeah, everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, shit, doesn't get really than that, homie. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, even Jane Street too, like from Jane and Bloor all the way to uh, like Vaughn and all that too. It's like actually like one of the second biggest streets uh, in uh, Toronto, like even in Facts. Ontario too. Yeah. Like, but it has more of like a lot of like Spanish orig origins too and all that. Like when 100%. you go to Jane and Bloor, Jane and Warner, you have like a lot of like El Salvadorians too and all that. And like also like Nicaraguans and like yeah. Ecuadorians too. Like when you go up, nor uh, up north to like Jane and Lawrence, Jane and Weston too, you'll Facts. see some Spanish spots too, like Ecuadorian, uh, Nicaraguan. Peruvian <coughs> to Jaden Wilson, Jaden Finch to like Vaughn to King City, 
more Spanish people too. And like, yeah, that's a fact. I've noticed like that's like <clears throat> kind of like the stomping grounds for like Latinos nowadays too, you know? So it's like. Nah, a real thing, yo. Like, yo, the Latin culture is all over the J, man. Yeah. Let's be real. Like, yo, it's diverse. Let me, yeah, I, like, don't get me wrong. Like, you got Jamaicans, you got Guyanese people, you got Somalians, you got all type of people, man. It's diverse. Like, reality is it's all types of culture, all types mm-hmm. of people just trying to really get through life, trying to, you know, trying to make better for themselves and their families. That's really what it is. That's what's really going on in that area. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And shit, like, like like I said, but yo, the Latin descent is definitely popping out there, man. Like, yo, I do got a lot of people that are looking up to me right now on the strip that are, you know, straight from back home or yeah. back from home countries and stuff like that. And they're really fucking with the music. I even got some supporters out in Cuba. I got some supporters out. I got bear supporters out in Ecuador. Like, yo, family ties, all that stuff. Like, yeah. it's the music is really, I'm pushing it to get it, not just locally out there, but, you know, yeah. again, wider than that. Uh, most but, definitely too. And I mean, music wise too, like, I can see like for like Jane and Weston, like in that Western Road strip, like it's kind of big with music. And then when you go up north to like Jane and Finch, you know, Jane and Steels, you know, yeah. Jane and Weston, it's kind of big too. But like, you know, growing up, was it big for music at the time? Yo, I'm going to be real with you. Growing up, it like it got bigger when I was around like 16, 17, more around them. Like, honestly, I'll be real with you. Like, man, them and niggas are just focused on making their money. Let's be real. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, um, I feel that the rap scene, <coughs> excuse me, did take over uh, the Toronto scene. Like, yo, it it swept the it swept the city like yo, like 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 a virus that like everyone wants to be a rapper now. You know what I'm saying? And that's not that's not bad, but I mean, again, it makes it a little bit more difficult for people like that are really doing it try to be more evident in the city. Yeah. You know, because everyone's really doing the same thing. But yeah, like uh, like you said, yeah, like it's difficult, but if you just keep doing this shit, man, you just you know you really push yeah. off and you'll get somewhere shit you yeah know? no 100 percent too and like yeah. you know even like i think you mentioned talking about like your childhood uh for a bit too you know like it was like kind of like instant guy here and there too you know just like moving to different parts too but from birth until like adulthood was it like a very great experience you know growing up yo honestly yeah it was it's tons of memories man like that's why like again like all over the strip man there's just a memory in every way i look you know saying family with family friends all that stuff because again i got friends from all over too you know what i'm saying but a lot of people do know that again got time for no politics got no time for the street stuff at the end of the day i'm making my money the way i'm making my money and if you, if you know if I rock with you, then I know you rock with me, and I'm gonna keep it a stack with you. If you keep it a stack with yeah. me, and that's a fact. I don't yeah. need you know I don't need I don't need a whole crew to kind of you know push myself. Or I kind of just I'm looking at it like I'm gonna do it differently. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to stand out in a different way and show people that individually and independently you can really do this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But you also gotta have the framework and the foundation behind you. You know what I'm saying? Because you can be an independent artist, but reality is. It's not all just independent. You can, yeah, like, you know, do it all yourself. But I'll tell you right now, you get a lot more done with a team. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? But yo, again, shit, yeah, like, independently is what I'm trying to do, right? That's that's the goal. And yeah, trying to man. stand out. That's yeah. the goal. My yeah. bad. I'm trying to stand out. Trying yeah, to be man. different, you yeah. know? Show. And I think, like, it's already, like, evident uh, right now uh, with the music, too. And, you know, you being, like, Ecuadorian all that, too, like, Toronto, I could definitely say this for a fact, too. Ecuadorians in Toronto make up more of the Latino population than like any other culture, more than Mexicans, more than Dominicans, Salvadorians and all that. A lot of other people, too. But like growing up in an Ecuadorian like household, how, what was it like and how do you feel about the Latino and Ecuadorian population like growing right now versus before and all that? So, I mean, yo, I even go like just Spanish families in general. It ain't even just about Ecuadorians. Like, you know, the, the culture is, you know, and the strict parents, you know, what I'm saying kids got to, you know, go to school. I got to do their shit. Everything's got to be in order. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how it is. Yeah, but wow. obviously, um, as the time, obviously the years have gone by, society is changing a little bit. So I guess the culture kind of faded away and people are kind of doing what they want now and the parents aren't as strict. But um, growing up for me though, uh, yeah, no, I, you know, I caught my beatings. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I caught yeah. my beatings and I, I did my fair share of shit. Yeah. But I ain't even gonna lie. Like, again, like, I also learned from that, you know, as much as, you know, it's, it's scare me or whatever the fuck it is. But yo, like yeah. everything that my parents taught me, like it really made me who I am today type shit. And it was, yo, it was rough at times, dog. Yeah. Tell you right now, switching house to house, switching schools to schools yeah. from young. Yo, but again, there's always a silver lining. Yeah, switching man. schools to schools, moving all the time. That kind of got me yeah. to meet more people. And obviously yeah. I have people all over, like, you know. Yeah. So again, uh, Growing up was difficult. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But um, 
So was everyone else's life too, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But what I did was just, I really stayed focused on me, what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, me, myself, I didn't really follow that strict culture where, you know, but my parents did, you know, they were hard on my ass and, you know, what's wrong is wrong and what's right is yeah. right type shit, you know? Yeah, not 100% so, too, yeah. Yeah, And, and um, you know, like, as he talks about, like, switching schools too, because I know that you said, like, you moved to Vaughn, like, in a previous interview too. So, like, moving from, like, you know, like, moving from... uh highly like centralized school like in Toronto to somewhere in Vaughan too you know like even with the education system in the TDSB versus like yeah, your yeah, region yeah. and all that too it's like a different vibe too because Hella different. you know you're going to a school with <clears throat> like people of color and then moving to another school where it's primarily it's less like, diverse yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying yeah no I hear you fam uh, yeah. yeah again there was a lot of obstacles in, in those uh, in those yeah. areas of my life obviously you know making making friends and shit you know yeah. again growing up I didn't really have all the best fucking clothing or I didn't have all yeah. the coolest shit that all these other kids had you know yeah. all I had was payless shit you know just George's yeah. t-shirts or whatever yeah. the fuck it was that like, I didn't really have it all so yeah. I kind of enjoyed what I did I like I took I didn't take what I had for granted I kind of just took it as this is what I'm this is what I got I'm gonna use it to my advantage yeah flip it in any other way that I can yeah. later on but yeah, man, like switching schools was very difficult. You know what I'm saying? Me on myself, I'm a people's person, but like I'm a people's person if like I feel the vibe is there to talk. Yeah, you know what I'm 100%. saying? Because yo, dog, if, if I feel the vibe's not there to talk, I ain't gonna talk. I ain't gonna say a word <laughs> yeah, to you, man, like real no, shit. You know? Too. So it was one of those ones where I am a people's person. I'll approach you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. can approach me, but yo, I'll be real with you. Like if I just don't feel the vibes right, then just don't even look my way type thing. And I won't even look your way, you know? But yeah. That's how it was with me growing up. So I wasn't really uh, always in a crowd or with people. I was just kind of more independently doing my thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, I guess growing up, switching schools to schools, I did uh, end up meeting more people. And yeah, that kind of um, brought me... Like if you, if you look at my followers on IG, a lot of people, yo, you have a lot of people found that nowadays they buy followers, this and that, or whatever it is. Yeah. Everyone, yo, the first the first thing they look at my shit and they're like, yo, that, that you can check my account. My shit's been up there since 2013. Ah, so true. shit, like, yo, all my shit's authentic. Like, I'll be real with you. <laughs> all uh -huh. my followers, all my IG, all my socials and shit, it's all like, I ain't got to say it, but fuck, like, had that shit since I was young because I moved so many times and obviously my parents, you know, went through a little separation. Obviously, that's why I be moving so much. Like, yo, I met more people and I met a lot more people from different areas of Toronto or the GTA, whatever you want to yeah. call it, you know? Yeah, man, not but, um, Fuck, yeah, look at, yeah. you know, my, now I got the following and I'm doing the music and it's kind of working out, yeah, you know? Man. It kind of seems like it was kind of planned all along if you really look at it in a way, you know? Yeah, man, not 100% too. Feel me? Um, Like, even before this music shit and all that too, you know, what did you initially wanted to do like when you wanted to grow up, you know, for a career and job and all that too? Like, what were like some plans you wanted to be like when you first wanted to grow up? Oh, I'm gonna be real with you. Like, yo, my mom's like growing up, my mom's and my pops was always listening to hip hop. So hip hop music just always been in my blood, even from like from my youth times. Like, you know, like I was a youth listening to shit in the whip and shit. So it's like, yeah. Music was been in my life from the start. So not that I knew I was gonna be a fucking uh, like, you know, an artist or, you know, a performer or whatever, but um I think a big factor was my parents. And that, that also, because uh, their ears for music, they listened to not only just what was popping at the time, they listened to like the OG shit, yeah. you know, talking about like Dr. Dre, Eminem, you know what I'm saying, Busta Rhymes, Cypress Hill, you know what I'm saying, I can name yeah. Bear more like Tupac, Biggie, but fuck, like, list yeah. goes on, dog. Again, all that stuff, like because of that, that's where I am today again, because my ear for music is it's top notch, because obviously I've been put on from young type shit, you know? Yeah, no, but, yeah, doggy. Yeah. And like, you know, like just even like that around that time too, like I think like this is like what, like back in the 2002, because like in the 90s, you had like Biggie, Park, uh, Wu-Tang, yeah. like all that type of stuff too. So Facts. Yeah, man, nah, 100%. 100%. And, you know, how did you manage to, like, how did you get into like rapping and like, you know, even making music and like picking up the mic and all that? So, yo, it honestly all started closer to around college. Well, I was in college, yeah. So obviously, you know, I graduated, did high school, finished my fucking, yo, that, that was my main goal, to be honest. Growing up was just, yo, I need to get this school shit done because, fuck, I ain't even trying to, like, be hearing it from no one that, oh, you didn't finish school, this, that, so, fuck. You know, I'm not going to say that I, you know, I went in, I went out with a fucking 100%, but, dog, yo, I passed. That's all I know, and I graduated, so shit, I got that done and over with. School's out of my life. Yeah, done. I learned what I learned. You don't know what it is. And then after I took, obviously, you know, just to please my parents, you know, I continued to follow through with college. You know what I'm saying? I took some business shit for that for college and went to Humber. So for that, for the people that obviously want to know what college I went to, went to Humber at Lakeshore. Not the one uh, up in Guelph, but um Lakeshore. And 
Yeah, man, I did like, I was supposed to do a two year program. I lasted about a year. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even go lie, a year. And I'll be real with you, the year, I did good, but it was a few classes I failed. And again, like mm -hmm. main reason was because one of my homies that I had met there, uh, I actually became really close with him. He was into music himself and he happened to be an engineer and he was studying some shit like in, in the, on the campus for music and stuff like the arts or whatever, you know? Told me he's got a studio up in his dorm. So, the, I, you know, for me, I'm like, you know, that was the first time I really like acknowledged, oh shit, this, you know, this is a studio environment. So it started from there, skipping classes, being late all the time and just completely flunking out of college to begin with. Like just completely fam. And yo, sorry moms, but yo, like I really just followed through with my passion, yeah. yo. You know, I, you know, I didn't really, I didn't really want to do what I was doing when I was up yeah. in college. So shit, follow through with my dreams. I didn't yeah. just stick to what people were telling me to do yeah. or people, you know, wanted me to do, you know, or the idea of what you wanted me to do. So yeah. chose my own route. And then just fucking, yeah, dog, I dropped out of college, unfortunately. And then from there, I was just taking the music seriously because again, every day I was skipping, I was at the dorm, right? I was making music. Yeah. I was just yeah. trying to see what the fuck, like, you know, what's going on. And like, yeah. this is, and then realizing that, yo, I have something for this. And you know, it's like, it's different. I could hop on different, different flows. Yeah. It's not like something that you hear on an everyday basis. I had people telling me that, that pushed me more. Yeah. After college, man, that's when I got more and more into the music is when I started putting like money into studio time and really driving out and going places for the music and stuff like that, you yeah. know? Uh -huh. But um, yeah, that's how it kind of like started off. It was <laughs> me dropping out of college and um, happened to be that my homie that I met and made friends, good friends with, had a studio pretty much up in his dorm made and he was an engineer. Yeah. So again, like another reason why I sometimes look at it and I'm like, yo, is this really meant, this is probably meant to happen type yeah. shit. No, 100% you too. Know? And you know what's crazy too? Like a lot of stories like this kind of remind me of like other artists like that have been like in similar paths too. Um, I don't know if you listen to like a rapper by like the name of like Nasty C and all that. Uh, he's like from South Africa and all that. I've heard of him. Sounds familiar. So um, basically he said like in an interview too where um, you know, he was like rapping while still like being like in like university too and all that. And he said, you know, I wanted to become like a full-time rapper and all that too. And like he said to his dad, you know, I can, I can give you two choices too. You know, you could... Uh, like continue with this music for a year, like take a year off. And if it works out, like continue on. Yeah. Or if it doesn't work out, you have to go back to school. Facts. Within that year, he made like so much money. Like he kind of got famous off rapping uh, right now, like in South Africa too. It's like one, like one of the most like well-known rappers in South Africa. You know, he That's was amazing. on um the Coming to America 2 soundtrack and he's doing some stuff with like J. Cole right now. And like also like Boss and like Ari Lennox too. So... Like, you know, with come ups uh, like that too. Like, I think even in a situation like yours when you dropped out and, you know, the music just kind of yeah. like made up for yourself too. Just like, happened. it kind of solidifies like, hey, like, I'm here to stay, you know, like, I'm going to keep going whether I'm opening up for like a lot of artists or whether I'm going to be like on a big billboard like in the next year or two and all that. Yeah, because again, I had no clue I'd be where I am right now. Like, yeah, you know, well, or all the names that I've opened up for. Yeah. Like, shit, like, yo, Ice Cube, like, Bro, that's like that. That's that's a West Coast classic yeah, yeah, god. Yeah. Like what? Like and yeah. I like you know what I'm saying. I got to tap in. Like got to actually meet him. Type shit. You know, like to perform on the same damn stage that he stepped on. That's a that's a gift to me, man. You yeah, know what I'm man. saying. I look at that as a gift from God. Yeah, because that opportunities like that you don't get just anywhere. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, Lloyd Banks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Like huge G unit, man. Yeah, it's, man. Tony Yayo, I met. So that again, I'm pretty much meeting the <laughs> the back in the day squad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like Fam. the epitome of like 2000s rap and all that yeah. too. Like, I mean, if you managed to like open up for like 50 and Eminem too. Yo, that, again, that would have been mod. <laughs> you know, that would have been the full circle and that yeah, boom, exactly, you know what I'm man. saying? Yeah, That's man. it. Mans are gone. But yo, we're taking it a step at a time. We're finding the right opportunities yeah. for the right time and we're executing them type thing, yeah. you know? Nah, again, uh, who else? Tony, yeah, Tony, like you said, Tony Yeo. I got to, I got to actually, actually fit like, Tap in, tap in with Tony A, oh, which is crazy. Yeah. Shout out to Peter Jackson because, yo, big ups to Peter Jackson. Because if it wasn't for Peter Jackson, I wouldn't have been able to tap in or be able to mm -hmm. have these opportunities to be very, to even begin with. Yeah. So, yo, big ups to him because he really put it on right now for the Canadian scene and to making America and Canada come together and music yeah, industry man. wise. So, yo, yeah. big shout out to Peter Jackson because, yo, Big Dog's really doing it right now. He's bringing out the biggest yeah. artists right now, the popping artists from, the, from America and he's Yo, he's setting up these mm -hmm. nice shows. Uh -huh. so you know what I'm saying? But um, like I was saying, man, yeah, like um, again, it's all about just kind of being consistent and 
again, I never thought I would be here, but yeah. yo, now that I know what I'm doing, I'm kind of sticking to this yeah. path and I'm going to continue because yeah. I met, um when I went out to NYC, we'll talk about, well, you know, get the, we'll, I mean, we'll talk more yeah, about we'll that talk too, about you know, that. We'll talk like, about I want to like build the story like exactly, a little bit too. you know what I'm saying, man? What inspired you to become the man you are today, like being like a rapper and an artist and, you know, taking your craft seriously as opposed to like other artists doing all that? Honestly, the people, the movement, the support, and the love from from all the people around me. That really is the biggest, biggest motivation that you can like you can have. And when I mean like people around you, like there's gonna be haters. So for me, love is hate and love. So whether you're hating on me, whether you're you're loving what I'm doing, point is you're talking about me. It means you're fucking with it somehow. You're not liking it, but you're talking about it, type shit, you yeah. know? So <laughs> reality is for me, it's like at the end of the day, like um again, it's still like you still gotta I still gotta be the main like I'm trying to be the main topic, but again, that comes with consistency. So again, um yeah, man, like yeah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got you, man. And you know, like you doing UK drill and all that too. Like I think you're like the only Toronto artist like doing UK drill right now, aside from like Trey Mission and all that too, but what made you decide on prioritizing like UK drill as like your main genre, like in your music only? Do you feel that it stands out more than like other sounds that are coming out of Toronto right now? Yeah, I'm gonna be real with you because everyone I speak to or everyone that hears anything that I put out, um, the first thing they say is, whoa, like, oh, this doesn't sound like everyone. And to me, that's again, goes back to the inspiration, how I, you know, people saying that to me, it's like, okay, so this shit sound different. Then that means that there's something that's standing out. And if that means there's something standing out, that means I got something, you know what I'm saying? So let me put that something into more play. Uh, and you know what I'm saying? So, man, it's just, again, the inspiration obviously came from people around me. And again, the UK genre, the UK Latin genre that I'm putting out right now does stand out in the city. And yeah, it's, man. um, it's booming, man. Yo, people yeah. are fucking with it. Like I got clubs bumping the tracks. Yo, mm -hmm. shout out DJ Clutch. Shout out John J. Come on, man. Those are some big DJs out in the city right now. They're out every yeah. night, man. Clubbing it up. They be DJing it, spinning the one and twos, but yeah. they be really doing it, man. Yeah, so man. yo, yeah, like shit. It's like having all these people around me and they, you know, they rocking with the movement. That gives me more motivation, fam. Yeah, nah. That's more, 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 uh, yeah, more determination and more dedication yeah. on my part because I look at that as like, yo, let me, let me give them more. Yeah, you man. know, let me give them yeah, more, man. man. <laughs> you, you know, to be honest too, like I feel like because I mean, Rolling Loud, they kind of stopped uh, for a bit too yeah. in Toronto. Like you might have no, uh, noticed that too. I but, did, yo. Uh, but um, this uh, other uh, festival too, our uh, Veld, um, they have a stage where it's like mainly UK drill rappers and all that too. But like what I noticed is that they don't really put Toronto artists on that are actually doing the UK drill. And I actually would have thought you would have been like a perfect uh, fit for that um, because they've had like, they're gonna have like Central C, H, yeah. Unknown T, all those other guys Facts. too. Like you might have seen like on the subway too and all that too. So I did, but I yeah. felt like if they would have put Toronto artists uh, on, I think you would have been like a perfect fit and all that. No, my brother. Again, just like I said, the 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 motivation from everyone around me, hearing that from you, just gives me more motivation <laughs> and definitely push on. And yeah, man. that's the goal, brother. Yeah, man. One day, you know, hopefully you're gonna see me on that stage. Yeah, man. And fuck, we're gonna rock the fuck out. We're gonna turn it up, man. You know yeah, what I'm man. saying? Nah, hundred percent too. Yeah. I mean, we'll discuss more about that rolling loud and For everything else too. Hundred percent. But um, you yeah. know, being a UK Latin drill artist from Toronto, how is it like? And you know, what was like the reception like from the city? when you started like releasing music with that sound and how did like, how did it like change for you in, in that sense? So yo, like honestly putting out more, like again, it's mainly the Latin that's, that's really like standing out, right? So I got the Latin community going crazy right now. Like I'm trying to really like get them more engaged, but I'm really trying to tap in more with more and more like culturized people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or like uh, the, the big Toronto pages, like Toronto Latinos and like, you know, all these other big pages. So I, I feel that the city is, um is in tune yeah. they're in tune it's just i gotta really push myself to get it out there more for for the for the latin community yeah. and the people of them like to really like start pushing it themselves yeah man because you know what i'm saying like yo people are rocking with it already don't get me wrong but i'm not gonna sit here and say that yo everyone's fucking with yeah, it now nah, because i'm yeah. still building you know i'm still yeah. stepping my way up yeah and i'm still meeting more people as we speak so yeah man um yeah, and like they got again, shout out to Team Real Estate because she's put me in some rooms where I've got to meet some big people. Yeah. And with those people, they've tapped in with other people where they speak to other people. And yeah. just a simple conversation with another person goes a long way. Yeah, you know no. what I'm saying? Because shit, uh, 
it, that's how that's really how it is. It's yeah, through man. talks and through yeah. the social medias where how artists are being yeah. spoken about or referred to or talked about, yeah. you know? And like I don't know if like the big pages like ever like receive that notice from you, like, you know, just with what you're doing right now too. Because like there's gonna be like some people that are gonna like listen to the sound and like they would assume it's like a gimmick and all that too, because yeah. Why is a uh, Toronto man doing like UK, like Latin uh, drill and all that too? Yep. And now with uh, the other stuff too, like, have you ever like kind of noticed that? Fat, yo, honestly, I've dealt with that enough times where I got people like, yo, stop trying to, stop trying to sound like you're from the UK. Yo, broski, like straight up, <laughs> it's not, it's not like I'm trying or anything. Just, yo, when I hop in the booth and the way that I spit, just like when you hop in the booth and you spit and you don't, you don't try to do anything. You just, yeah. you just speak. That's what comes yeah, out. Nah. That's the voice that comes out. So my bad if y'all feel like it's forced, but shit, dog, that's just the voice that God gave yeah, me man. and fuck. <laughs> like, you know, I'm going to fucking use it. Like, yeah. you know, what do you want me to say, dog? Yeah, man. Nah, you know what I'm saying? So shit. Too, yo. But, but like, you know, even with that sound too, because like the UK has to be like tapped into like yeah. in that sense too. So have you ever received any reception or notices yeah, from so, this, like listeners in the UK and uh, like any cosigns? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to be real with you. Like in terms of cosigns, I've actually been speaking to a few artists. Um, they're They're doing their own thing right now themselves. Um, there's a few that I've actually managed to like. I don't know if you heard of YA from UK. Yeah, from uh, the UK. Nah, so, I, I don't again, know. there's a, these are artists that you probably are not gonna be familiar familiar with, but like they're they're doing their thing out there. And when I go out there, I got people to tap in with and to definitely collaborate to bring back home some fucking UK ex Toronto music. Yeah, man. but um, but yeah, like I have been tapping in and have been uh, tuning into the UK media yeah. scene as well. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me, because when I do go out there, um. That's when the opportunity for me to really now say, yo, let's tap in. Let's really put it into action. So I'm right now building those connections as we speak. It comes with um, building the connections before you actually, you know, actually link up and, you know, collaborate on a track. It's yeah. uh, setting it up before I go out there. And then when we get there, we just execute it type thing, you know? No, 100% too. And, you know, I want to get more into like the whole like team real estate two for seven uh, yeah. situation too. So like, how did the working relationship happen? And, you know, what was it like having her as your manager in terms of your musical journey and process? And like, what's that relationship like? Man, she's family. Like, can't give it to you any other way. She's family. So <laughs> however, however anyone else looks at it, that's what it is. And you're hearing it from me. It's, she's family, dog. Like, that's like, that's my ride or die. Oh, she's, she's been there since the beginning, fam. You know what I'm saying? Like, me and her came about because of an interaction with her out of nowhere. Again, this is why I see, fam, when I tell you, well, like music was possibly like supposed to be in my life or I was supposed to do this. It's because of moments like this. So my pops had odd, like my pops, my dad, just out of nowhere was obviously downtown Toronto, you know, booling it after work at the bar, bro. She was doing an interview with another artist at the same place. Okay. There was a, like, you know what I'm saying? So they were at the same place at the same time. My pops ended up managing to speak with her because um the artist knew my pops type thing. And from there, my pops tapped in with Team Real Estate herself, hit me up. I already knew who she was. So me hearing that, yo, my dad was like talking, you know, this, you know, big industry. In my head, big industry person right now because she's really doing it. I see her everywhere. Yeah. So shit, like for me, it's like, yo, you're speaking. You know who you speak? You know who you're speaking with? I told him that. I'm like, yo, do you even know who you're speaking with right now? <laughs> And then after that, he was like, like, yeah, like, yo, she's big. I'm like, yeah, she's huge. So honestly, we spoke this and that. And from there, I actually DM'd her and she hit me up. She was like, if you want an opportunity, I got you. Come up to Kitchener this weekend. I don't know what that meant. I didn't, I could, that could be anything. Okay. That could be anything <laughs> yeah, yeah, to, to any, to any individual. That message could mean anything. Come out to Kitchener and come do your thing. That's what I got. Yeah. And you know what, fam? I took a leap of faith that night. And I, yo, my girl in the back right now, she's probably looking at me funny because, yo, that night we was really like, yo, what are we really doing? We're about to drive out to Kitchener for what? We don't really yeah, know what we're going there for type yeah, shit. Man. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. But I'm going to be real with you. When we got there, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't what I expected. But yo, she was there and she came through with what she said. And she said, I'll put you on opportunity. And yo, I performed at that venue that night. And from there, me and her connected. And then, dog, it just became yeah, more man. of a of just straight chemistry like and a family relationship, a family yeah, relationship yeah. Uh, from there. You know what I'm saying? Like it's crazy because yeah, she's more than just dog. Like people look at her as just a straight up manager or whatever like that. Dog, she's more than that. Like yo, yeah. she's the guidance. She's the backbone. She's yeah. really like you know. Yeah, she's and helping me. She's helping me. She's really guiding me and especially in this industry, bro, gets grimy, fam. Yeah, so she's had to show me a few times where the yeah. real at and where the fake at. Yeah, and maybe sometimes you know I was dumb enough to look the other way, but yo, she really. 
She knows what I go on, fam. Uh, she yeah, she man. knows where the fakes at. She knows where the real is at. And that's why I fuck with her because she only brings me where the real is at. You feel yeah. me? Nah, 100% too. And I think it. she's been going crazy since like 2018, 2019, you know, with Chromas and all that too. She was like helping her out uh, for a bit. And then exactly. she tried working out with this other artist too. I think it's explainable too, but it just didn't work out the way it should. And then yeah. now she's working out with you, with KG and all that too. And, yep. you know, she led you to bigger opportunities uh, that I've noticed. Like one thing yep. about her, like she's always like down to ride and always like Facts. loyal to put her genuine artist, yeah. down to earth and yeah. she means everything that she does from the heart yeah man so if you take advantage of her or if anyone wants to like yo it's just it's ridiculous because that girl is that lady and that woman yeah. she's all heart and she wants to see everyone win yeah. but some people just have different visions yeah, but you man. know what man Tell you right now, for anyone that, that doesn't know her personally, man, get to know her, dog, because she's yeah. lit. Like, yo, she's <laughs> yeah. lit and she's an amazing man. business partner and she is an awesome individual in general. So, yeah, yeah tap man. in. Team Real yeah, Estate, man. make sure you guys tap in with her. For real, for real. And I think the people who are already, like, trying to do something wrong and all that to her and all that, I mean, it's already explained, too, but we're not going to give that fame out right now, too. No, nah, for you, sure, you know. It's, yeah. nah, it's not, again, you know what I'm saying? This is right now, what we got going on is what we talking about right now. But yeah, again, man. like, People gotta appreciate Team Real Estate because yeah. she's put out and she's done a lot for the music industry and she's a she's a big outlet. Yeah, so man. I'm just just putting it out like, straight up. People gotta appreciate that. Nah, yeah, likewise, man. bro. Um, you know, just like looking at your music right now, I know you're dropping an EP soon and all that, but like you're dropping more singles than like a full length project. Aside yeah. from you know your single uh, on uh, the Up Next uh, Six uh, project, do you feel like dropping singles is a better way to connect uh, with your fan base than uh, dropping a project or? Are you more inclined to drop dropping a project sooner, or like even with the EP? So honestly, brother, right now because like yo, like again, I just started out type thing. Um, again, I'm focusing on putting music out, but if you really look at the people's attention spans nowadays, it ain't very long. So as much as I want to drop an EP right now or an album, not sorry, not an EP because I am I I got. My bad people I got an EP coming just now My bad It's not an album I want to do right now <laughs> You know what I'm saying So shit It's the album that right now I'm not I'm not in for Because Fam They're gonna bust the one They're gonna They're gonna bust the One, two, three, four, five track And then it's like Alright they played it once Yo this You know like Okay like That's boom That's a lot of catalog I just put out uh -huh. And for you to hear it You know And you know For you to just One week It's played out and then the next week boom now I gotta put out another album because again I'm starting out so I can't be expecting everyone to be bumping the same album for fucking for time you know I gotta continue continuously be putting out so again I feel that right now with my catalog I'm dropping quality over quantity you yeah. feel me so that's what's going on right now yeah. and that's what I kind of got in mind so yeah you are gonna see a lot of singles but yo listen to them cause Yo, like, yeah. if you really listen to them, they're booming. Like, yo, I had, you know, I had people telling me that, yo, like, there's tracks that I've, I put out even before working with Team Real Estate. And it's like, yo, people are still telling me right till this day, like, yo, that track's my favorite one. Yeah. And it's like, oh, shit, for real type shit? Yeah. It's like, yo, that one I thought was my sloppiest shit, you know? Yeah, man. But fuck, like, yeah, again, it's the main thing is people's attention spans. Yeah, man. So you're only going to get singles and surprise EP coming just now just yeah. you know just you know <laughs> yeah, not gonna man. say too much right now you know but yeah well, man no 100 percent too you know initially i thought you were supposed to be with like nlmg uh for a bit too because i know like the whole like affiliation with everyone around there too like it's like in deep and all that too and like i had them like just like a while back to uh true villa like ww lowry connoisseur ghost mk uh green beans too like and like just using the connection from there too like even watching like these broken uh, like playground like uh, videos and all that too, like I thought like that was like the whole process uh, from there and all that. But um, like I was like that affiliation like for a bit. So the well, you just mentioned the broken playground. If I'm gonna be real with you, like before Jess, before Team Real Estate, that was my backbone. So oh, if you ever heard of the broken playground, like yo cameras, I'm telling you right now, if you ever heard of the broken playground, artists in Toronto, industry personnel, make sure you guys tap in with them. I'm telling you right now. They're two individuals, okay? It's made up of two individuals that are strong, dedicated. They have major work work ethic and they know what they're doing marketing-wise and they know what they're doing engineering-wise because they have a producer and they got a yeah. marketing team and a photographer and like a whole a whole backbone. Like they got the whole team, okay? But, but the whole team is two people, which is crazy. And I started out meeting them out of completely nowhere. Okay.
They hit me up, random page, with like 100 followers, the Broken Playground. Hey, brother, you know you want to do a, you want to do a free music freestyle video? Again, that shit don't happen in Toronto, bro. You know, yeah. <laughs> either one, it's a lot, it's a setup thing that you're about to go because who yeah. the fuck is gonna who's gonna record a free video for you? Like who, who's gonna like who does that yeah, right now? Nah, you know what I'm saying? 100% too. Unless you really yeah. know the person. Or unless you got connects, then you're getting a free video. Yeah, but let's man. be real, money talks. Yeah, man. So what really happened was a free freestyle video. That's literally what happened, which blew my mind because, yo, I met up with this person and he put his words into action. And everything that they said they were going to want to do, we did it. And that's how I think Team Real Estate heard of me was because of Broken Playground, because of the amount of work that yeah. they put in, uh, making sure that they were, they were, they, man, they were doing ads, man. They were, bro, yeah. I had a team like, and I, I didn't do nothing. Yeah. I literally like, yo, that's why I got to give it to them because without them, again, I would, again, with them yeah. too, I would not be here because shit, I blew up enough to get Team Real Estate's attention because of yeah. them. Yeah. So yo, shout out Broken Playground, man. Yeah, man. And shout out, you know, shout out those two individuals. They know who they are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love those two, man. Those are my guys, and they're still they're still in the background, man. They still they're still with YBA, man. They're still working. We still got shit yeah. coming. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you guys tap in with Nine Million. He's the producer, so yeah, ah, tap in with Nine Million. It's got sick beats, man. Ah, sick true. beats, no. and they're up in a. They're actually not in Toronto. That's what's crazy. They're up in Shelburne. They're like two hours away. But man, again, that's why you know God's plan type shit, yeah, man. No. Shit happens for a reason, right? Yeah, man, a hundred percent too. And I mean, you know, even with the stuff you you have uh, right now, I mean, the freestyle uh, I think music video might have been uh, pretty late too. I have to kind of like check it out when I get home. But you know, I was like mainly listening listening for like Spotify and all that. Yeah, you know, like tapping in with you. So like to speak more on like the songs you have, like what's the inspiration and creative process for like stood my ground, you know, move your hips. Uh, if they ask who it was, gifted, we was young and like calm. Like you could even like explain with some of them, you know, like if it might be like a little bit too much. Nah, you're good, bro. I'll, I'll run through like each and every one because to be honest, if the people want to know, that's why I'm here, right? Shit. So they have to, if they ask who it was, it was just mad. Yo, that, 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 that track just came about on its own. That wasn't anything forced. That wasn't anything like I had in, like, in the studio ready. Like usually I have criteria on the, like ready. That wasn't ready. That was just straight off the top, in the box, spitting. And... The producer made the beat from scratch, the same session. Again, shout out Ninillion. Ninillion made the beat straight from scratch, same session, recorded it, executed it, had my cousin, who was a who literally first time that ever like been in a studio. He's like, yo, can I drop a one-two bar? I'm thinking like, yo, don't fuck on my track, nigga. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but fuck. Yo, it took a chance and dog, he spat out a good six bars. And shit, those six bars, it sounds hard with a track. And I kept it in there and I showed him, I'm like, yo, dog. You snapped. I didn't even know you had it like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He didn't fuck up the track. So I got to give it to him. And then boom, the producer just made a sound. Uh, the, the producer and the engineer just boom. They made a sound fucking top notch. That's how if the ask who it was came about. Perfect. That's just the track just sounds awesome. And I get multiple feedback from it. And it's uh, it's a lot of good feedback, too. So, um, yeah, that was it for the, if they ask who it was. Move your hips. That, that's actually yo I've had that I was holding on to that that was holding on to that track for a good minute now I've had that track for like a good year year and a half I made that back in uh, 2022 like in summer times and I was at Icebox Studios so shout out Icebox Studios you know what I'm saying um, that was my first few little times working with them and yo they're sick too yo you gotta go check out theirs too you know Icebox Studios is hard that one I had criteria ready and that plan that the plan for move your hips was really just about club environment like yo if you're not in the club to move your hips beat it we finna get the party lit like what the fuck like yo it's pretty self-explanatory yeah. you know what i'm saying you know yeah. beat it if not we finna get the party lit you know like yeah. shit like yeah man like that was just straight i was like i was in go mode that day i heard the beat and bam i was like yo imagine this shit in the clubs yo, i gotta make the lyrics sound hard for this so I really like actually sat down and yeah. wrote my shit out I planned out the hook planned out the verse you know I did all that because that was a, a well executed track that I felt needs a proper proper you know roller plan and there's still yeah. a music video coming for that it ju I just dropped the audio just uh, to you know get yeah. get it out there because I want people to hear more of my music and yo I know it's good enough that you're gonna want to watch the video when it comes out so yeah. you know what I'm saying so yeah. for now just enjoy the track 
And I got a surprise comment for a video just now. And yeah. yo, if they ask who was, I didn't. I forgot to mention actually. If they ask who was, has a video already done. We're just waiting to drop. Oh, and true. I'll be real with you. That's coming just now. So keep your eyes open for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Now moving on. Um, st- stood my ground. Yo, stood my ground. I fought this fight on my one just to get my funds. Yo, straight up, self-explanatory again, dog. All these tracks, sat there, wrote it down. And like, I really like, I just was wanting to more put music out to inspire people. Yeah. In a way. So that's how stood, stood My Ground came about. That's more of an inspirational track. You listen to that when you're like, you're smoking a spliff and you're just thinking about life. And you're just like, yo, you know? You know, like I don't need, yeah. I don't need no squad. I don't need no one. Could do this shit myself. I stood my fucking ground. You heard? Yeah. All right. Nah, so well. shit. So I stood my ground. Um, we was young. We was young. Uh, we was young. Had hopes and dreams. You know what I'm saying? That again, little bro, he rode with a beam. Don't stress. One day he go set it down while I continue to run up these dreams. No lies, no lies. You know that's again that bar right there. If you can, you know, replay the video back or whatever, you guys could hear what I just said. Man, that it's a bar. You know what I'm saying? Because little bro had to put that down while I was running up the streams type shit. And yeah, like, fuck. Um, That's just pretty self-explanatory. It's we we was young, bro. I had hopes and dreams and fuck, now I'm putting them into action. That was one of my first few tracks though. That was one of my first few tracks. Little no, that was my first track. Like that was the freestyle video that the broken playground shot. So if you want to check the freestyle out, that's what it's on. It's on, it's on, it was on the track we was young and it's on youtube on my on my uh youtube channel and uh broken playground yeah man. so you guys go check that out yeah, man. and then I uh, calm i think calm yes calm with teagues um so yeah me and uh me and teagues actually don't really speak no more uh kind of a little faulty you know just a it, it's life man you know what i'm saying there's just there's things in life that you can't you know you can't really force so it's uh, i'm not really working with him in the moment right now or i'm not planning on working with him in the future just uh just just for unfor- unforeseen circumstances type thing, you know? Just gonna yeah, keep, no. just keep it clean out here, you know? Yeah, but no. um, but yeah, like, it was a good track. Don't get me wrong. Still fuck with it. We did amazing on that. He did his part. I did my part. Yo, he sounded sick. I sounded sick. And fam, that shit just came about and we did a video for it. And yo, the video came out hard because yo, that video was super low budget. We didn't pay for, we didn't pay for that video. That was done by Jammers. I, I hate Jammers. So if you guys don't know about Jammers, you know what I'm saying? Is I hate Jammers is his Instagram. Or jammers, you know what I'm saying? Or look him up on the broken playground. He's yeah. a part of the broken playground. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, he's the one that actually put all that shit together from scratch, like editing, all that. But yeah, like give big ups to him. Um that's oh, how that track calm came about. But uh lyrics wise, I just I heard his 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 his, uh, his verse and his hook, and I just went along with it. Yeah. Felt the vibe, went in the booth, started spitting my shit. And the track was made. Yeah, man. And then, boom, we dropped it. Yeah, man. Aaron? Yeah, likewise, man. And, you know, I think we've already discussed this earlier, too. But, like, you've been, like, all over the road, too. Like, all over Ontario. You know, you were, like, in New York and all that, too. Were you also in VA as well, too? Because you were uh, tapping in with a guy from the VA and all that, too. So, so I wasn't in VA, but um, we was in Pennsylvania. Oh, he true. came out for a show. Uh, the J.I. J.I. and Benny the Butcher. Yeah. So, yo, that was... The opportunity there because my boy got us um obviously with him he, we were there with him the whole time and when i say we were with him the whole time we were with all the industry personnel oh, so cool. obviously high priority people ji himself i obviously got to tap in with him my boy obviously you know i showed him we came from straight from toronto type shit and you know i'm just out here doing my thing i didn't really have a full convo with him but you know like yo we i spoke to him i showed him wagwan he was like yo toronto that's crazy he's like word he's like all right bro for sure like you know if anything we will ha- we'll holla and like type shit you know what yeah, i'm saying 100%. his management team i got to speak to some of them got to speak some of, to some of his camera crew so i wasn't really like focusing on the artist itself i was more focusing on the people that that are making up that artist himself so the camera crew the management, all those people, those are the people I was really keeping my eye on and figuring out who's who because those are the people you really want to try to network with. And if I'm in, if I'm if I'm in this environment where I'm right beside them, then I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use it to my advantage, yeah. man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mom, and again, definitely. shout out to Money Science Sheet. That was the artist that was performing. Big bro, we got a track actually on Spotify right now. It's called Out the Vault. Make sure you guys go check that out. He actually, well, we both made that track in downtown Manhattan. Loud, loud studios, loud studios, NYC. So shout out Loud Studios NYC. Yo, they cooked it up. We was like four in the morning. We had no motive. We we're like, yo, these guys have a studio session. And they like with pure heart just said, yo, come through. 
no. invited us to the studio session and not how did I know that that night we would have a track with an American artist and that's how it came about yeah, wow. and he's a, he's an amazing he's talented and he's really really doing it out there he's yeah. putting on for VA man so shout out Money Sand Sheed cause that's big bro for real for real you know what I'm yeah, saying wow. and we gonna we go, we go get some more shit in together me and him when, you know when we keep going yeah. out there and thing cause man he ain't stopping out there he's really doing it so multiple yeah, more shows coming and yeah, on his end he's putting it out, yeah. out there man yeah man and how is like that impact like you know performing all over like Ontario and like the US as well as like in your hometown to you know Toronto? It's different, man. It's super different. The people, the crowd, the environment, the setting, it's all different. And when I mean different, I mean different in a in a good way, man. Like you know, cause fam, I'll be real with you. Venues in this city, you go and let's be real, fam. Everywhere you look is a shy up nigga. You know what I'm saying? Is, is niggas looking grungy or niggas looking like they're there to just come do like some fuckery, you know? And it's like, yo, you can't really like, it's like, yo, this doesn't even feel for professional now. The venue doesn't really feel like, you know, like really musically, you know, you know, like really, that's what they're there for. It just kind of seems yeah. now they're letting it, you know, letting whatever. And for me, I look at it like, yo, if we're, if we're really invested in this music, then we should definitely be focused on, we should be focused on focusing on the music. Not what's going on in the streets or what's going yeah. on outside. Let's really push something out of Toronto that the Americans and the rest of the world can really look up to other than Drake and The Weeknd and the little people that we really have. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, yo, it's very different, man. It's very different yeah. and I love it out there. Yeah, people man. are more energetic. You can actually have real conversations with people and to be real with you, like, yo, the people, the vibe out there is different, man. They, 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 they in it to work. They're not in it for... Yeah. Yo, like, yo, for money, money grabbing. No, no, yeah, they no, actually are there to work. And yo, if you have that worth ethic, the same mentality, fam, you're good. You're good out there, man. You're yeah, gonna man. network and you're gonna meet people and you're gonna, you're gonna hit studios and you're gonna, you're gonna make bangers with all these artists because yeah, that's what they're about. Amer, yo, the Americans, like from what I've seen now, going out there many times, they're about business, bro. They're about their money. But they're also about making real good music to put out to the world. You feel me? Yeah, no. 100%. And I feel that's what Toronto's lacking right now. And I feel Toronto's lacking the collaboration aspect. Yeah. And I feel they're like it's more of just a, a ladder. And everyone's yeah. trying to be at the top of that ladder. And it's difficult because Toronto yeah. right now, if you want to be on the top of that ladder, you got to realize that you're going to have to work with people yeah. too. You can't just be the number one and stay number one forever. Yeah. You're going to have to learn to work with people. Yeah, man. So, and yeah. I think it's kind of evident with some artists too. Like there are some artists that are open to working with artists from, like the States or from the UK too. Um, yeah. The guy, uh, Bunlo, you know, he had Facts. a song with uh, Piero Giovanni and all that too. Shout out Bunlo. And if you don't know, he's actually, I'm bringing him out for uh, Dave East. I should shoot. So he's going to be coming out. He's going to be doing a one-two yeah, song. Man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yo, shout out Bunlo. That's my Latin goal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's really putting off for the Latin community True. too. Latin, the Latin, yeah. though, the Latin community is following him like he's right now he's pushing it for toronto yeah well. so shout out big bro shout out manito you know bonlo so man yeah what were you saying though i forgot you were saying um, something about bonlo uh yeah bonlo like he worked with Pier uh, payroll giovanni and all that too um yeah big names yeah crazy thing too um it might be controversial but top five pager activated yep. a lot of american artists too you're not gonna get some Toronto artists, like maybe like what Bundog and YG and Pressa, but Facts. he had Asian Doll, uh, Lil Zay Osama, Nardo Wick, G Herbo, Draco yep. the Ruler, and even if it's like the most controversial right now, like even recording in uh, Ontario prison, you know, he's still making moves, like having those people too. Like you don't see other Toronto artists like have American features like that unless like they're throwing in like a lot of money and all that, you know? Yeah, no, I feel you. Um, no, you're right, man. Like, again, like shit like for that yeah. like it's, it's pretty self-explanatory yeah. you know what i'm saying like shit like it's it's one of those ones where um i just feel that it needs to be much more collaboration in this city man yeah, 100%, too. <laughs> it's yeah. not like it, it's not really like hard to express like yeah. fuck like everyone in this city just doesn't seem to be getting along yeah and if certain areas and certain people were to get along Fuck that We'd be making A whole Lot of hella good music yeah, And You know what I'm saying We'd actually still have A lot of people still here yeah. Till this day Making good music And yeah. Would be really far right now And probably put on for the Like us that are coming up now nah, You know what I'm saying too, So yeah. um Yeah I mean Toronto really doesn't have like A double XL freshman I think they're relying 
on Double XL to see like which artist Toronto artist is gonna make it. Yeah. If there's actually gonna be like a magazine for uh, Toronto Double XL freshman, I mean, you'd be on it. I mean, Doctor Bushman, he'd be on it. Bushman's killing it. Yeah, dude. he's, he's uh, doing his thing. Yeah, I got uh, yo. If you uh, know what I'm saying, like I gotta tap in with bro. Yeah, but um, yeah, like. I see him. He's do he's doing yeah, big things. He's yeah, working with big artists in the city. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Nah, hundred percent too. Um, just getting onto this other question uh, right now. Do you have like any interesting, crazy tour stories uh, while touring? And like, you know, what's some do's and don'ts uh, for an artist like that's touring? Like, I don't know if you had like any like groupy experiences, even though it might be like a little bit uneasy right now to speak to speak it like in the room and all that too. But if yeah. you had like any story, like, do you want to share that? In? Yo, like, you want you want you want a big tip for touring? Yo, bring your pillow. <laughs> bring your fucking pillow. Cause I'll tell you right now, yeah. you ain't sleeping if you don't bring your pillow, dog. Cause you're gonna be in a, you're gonna yeah. be on a bed, you're gonna be on a couch, you're gonna be on a hotel bed, you're gonna be on something, you're gonna be sleeping all over the place. Cause when you're on tour, like, or when you're going everywhere, like, mm. there's no time for rest. And Not when sure. you do get to rest, it's only for a little bit, and you don't know where the fuck you're about to pass out. But if you bring your pillow, you'll get some sleep, and you'll be still focused for the tour. But yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like shit, like. I don't know, like fuck. That's just that. That's yeah. me. Like you know, for me, rest is is a big thing. Like yo, if yeah, I don't man. sleep, fuck, yo. And if I don't eat, yo, um, <laughs> I'll tell you right now, like yo, before every show on tour, wanna know some fun, yo, fun fact? I make sure that I eat a full meal right before I go up on stage. Yeah, bro. Cause yo, when I'm up on stage, sometimes I be thinking about like being hungry, and yeah. I don't know why, but like yo, oh, I just true. you know I be fucking hungry. So what I do is I true make true. sure I eat before my yeah, shows, man. dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you ever see me eating before my show, just know because. When I'm out there rapping for you guys on the stage, I'm, I'm content, also thinking yeah. about food because I'm hungry after, you know? Yeah, man. So let me just yeah, let me fill like my appetite it. before the show and do a good show for you guys. And then I'll eat after too. Yeah. Because, you know? Likewise. <laughs> and like, um, you, like, I mean, I think there was like this other tour that was supposed to happen. Uh, the Young Smoke Tour. Is it still happening? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, coming up. It's coming up. Dates are going to be announced soon uh, when I'm going to be, when I'm going to uh, be out there performing. Yo, I got to shout out Young Smoke. Bro. If it wasn't for Broski, I wouldn't have a lot of opportunities too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? For him putting me on his tour as well, on yeah. multiple tour dates, which is super lit. So, uh, yo, shout out Young Smoke. Yo, big bro, you're really doing it, fam. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Man. Keep pushing. You got the fucking industry on locks, fam. Let's, yeah. let's, yo, let's get it, fam. Let's yeah. get it. Yeah, likewise, man. And like, you know, even hitting from di different city to city because, I mean, you were all over Ontario and like, yep. you know, in the States too. Province so, like, wide, yeah. I like, mean, also, like, there was like this whole situation too. I think Tony Ayo spoke on this like in his Vi TV interview when he went to certain parts of Canada where there's a lot of shit going on too with Hells Angels and like Facts. the Bundog type stuff yep. too and like all that other type of stuff too. It's like kind of crazy, you know, so. Yeah, man, no, for sure. Like again, artists do have to be careful everywhere they go. Toronto yeah, is not a nice place. It's not all yeah. peaches and cream. Like at the end of the day, you, you better walk 10 toes when yeah. you're out in the city anyway because it don't matter where you are. It's just, it's Toronto fam. Simple. Uh, I ain't even gonna get into it. It's just Toronto. Simple. Yeah, so just stay ten toes, man. Yeah, you know. Man. But um, yeah, like, yeah, like straight up. That's what it is. It's yeah. uh, it's, yeah, man. Yeah, one hundred percent too. Um, I mean, I think we already spoke on the other question too. It's just like the growth as like an yeah, artist too. You want you can go over a few more yeah. too, man. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. You're good. I mean, uh, but like, yeah, I mean, to speak more on these uh, new questions uh, right now too. How do you deal with your mental health as a person in your position right now? with everything going on in your life, shows, features, social media, everything else too, uh, do you feel like at times it could be uh, overwhelming too? Yo, all the time it gets overwhelming and shit does get hard and that's life, yo. Like, I'm gonna be real, everyone's got their own situations, everyone's got their own problems going on back home or, you know, they got their own problems behind closed doors, but yo, for me, fam, I just, I look at it as an, I look as an, obst I look at an obstacle like, like, like every other obstacle. Like I gotta, I gotta jump over it and pass it. Like you know what I'm saying. Like life just keeps going, fam. I, I don't got no time to be, to be fucking stressing over one thing and staying mad about it or or staying stressed or whatever you want to call it, depressed or I don't know what the fuck you call it. But you know, I just for me, it's like my mentality is like, yo, one thing's if one thing is fucking up, another thing's gonna fuck up next week or the week after. So realistically, just try to just keep pushing and just. There's going to be obstacles. It doesn't come easy. You know what I'm saying? Especially in this music shit, like nothing is just gifted to you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you really got to work your ass off or whatever it is. And there's going to be times when, yo, I be stressed out as hell and back home or personal problems are going on. And I'm still walking up on that stage with a mic in my hand. And what am I doing? 
put up on I, yo fam I pour my heart into that performance you know what I'm saying I perform like I'm venting put yeah. it that way I'm performing like I'm venting that's my time to vent when I'm out there really like looking into the crowd yeah. and seeing that these people are here for me that's a sense of relief at times because that gives me that 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 relief and like yo people are rocking with him you know yeah, so no, fuck, like, too. People, shit's going bad but shit's going good yeah, I feel like a good side to it um, I mean with therapy you have to pay like a shitload of money to kind of speak with a therapist to speak on a lot of like personal stuff in your life too and like you don't want to pay two, three, four or five bills for an hour to speak with a therapist when you know you could be doing a show Facts. and you're getting that same amount too or the even sensation. more than yeah exactly you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. so me I never really yeah like I won't lie like I've been referred to therapists I've been referred to, to like you know specialists or whatever the yeah. fuck it is but even from young fam, I was uh, diagnosed with fucking, with, well, they thought I fucking had ADD or whatever, you know, like in, in, in school and shit. Because I could never stay still fam. I always wanted to do something. I was yeah, always fiddling. Yeah. I was always like, yo, like, fuck, what's the next move? Yeah. That's what it is, yo. That, that and reality is I don't have ADD. It's just, fam, I'm on go. Like, I'm yeah. on go mode. Yeah, like, man. yo, every, you know, if one thing, if one thing's over with, it's on to the next. Yeah. One exactly. thing fucks up. Another thing's gonna fuck up. Yeah. So just get over whatever. Right now, just messed up and keep pushing. No. And don't let no one tell you that you can't do nothing or that you can't get over nothing or that yeah, you, you just, you can't do nothing. Don't, don't let no one tell you you can't do nothing. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? And that goes for anyone because reality is, fuck, if I, if, if, I had many people tell me I couldn't do what I'm doing right now. I'm not gonna sit here and say, haha, I told you so, but yo, I'm here talking to you and I'm letting the people know what's up. Yeah, man. That's good enough for me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 100% too and you know I always ask like, artists uh, this from like from now on too but um, do you have any like favorite television shows movies books yeah. or podcasts you want to tap in to for people to check out too you know like outside the whole like music stuff yeah yo uh, I mean growing up you want like you, you're you at like growing up what I was watching is shit or, like, uh, or just like, in general like, like right now right what's now, popping like right now and all that you know fam like world star world, world, star, like, world star TV fucking no jumper I'm watching the no jumper podcast uh, fucking um, there's a few, yo, YouTube is endless now. Fuck. Mm. You you can find snippets of shorts or whatever yeah. of everything and like as you scroll. So for reality is I'm just I watch everything, yo. And I just stay in tune with the music, uh music industry and I stay in tune with what's going on in the music um in Toronto politically and non politically because yeah. as much as I don't want to involve myself in the politics, you need to know what's going on. Because yeah. if you don't know what the fuck you're doing or what you're saying or who you're who you're doing collaborations with in the city that are involved yeah. in the stuff, then yo, you're 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 just as much involved. Yeah. And you're just as much as a part of the problem. Yeah. And yeah, you need to move smart. And yeah, me as an artist, I'm trying to my best to be as smart as I can. Yeah. And I'm trying to make every play that I make the smartest move. Yeah. Because again, the reputation and the area that I come from is nothing nice. Yeah, and man. people I'm sure would love to hate for no reason. Yeah, man. So whatever your yeah. life, yeah, yeah. I think we already discussed this too because you already spoke about the Toronto music scene, like yeah. how there's like a lot of like negativity and all, and all that too. But how do you feel about like a lot of stuff, like you know Toronto Torontology and all that too, and like you know the whole keep six solid situation too, with you know media pages getting involved in like the politics and all that too, and like a lot of stuff like that. Yo, I'm gonna be super real, man. Like, and I, and I, yo, and I love the blog pages with my heart. Like, yo, because at the end of the day, we wouldn't be getting the platform to be put out if it wasn't for them. But a lot of blog pages, and I'm not going to name individual ones because it's not all of them, but there are some that they really misinterpret and they really mix and scramble the words or they mix and scramble stories and they make it something that it's not. And yo, when you really find out what's really going on, it's like the blogs are kind of adding fuel to the fire. Yeah. They're kind of infuriating people. And if you look at the comments, I'll tell you right now, go to any like anything that has to do with the political side, the political aspect of Toronto on any blog page. You look at the comments, it's all, oh, we're smoking him or this got pat, this, that, this. It's like, yo, come on, fam. It's like, it, reality is they're putting, they're just, they're putting yeah. out for artists. They're showing the artists like their talent and people are focused on like bullshit and it's yeah. like fuck fam like we could just let that be now like yo it's yeah. enough there's been already a few years fam same shit so yeah. um yeah dog it's uh i mean even with the shooting uh right now of keep six solid like yeah that, i feel like it does bring a reminder like not to cut you off and all that too but mm -hmm. i think it does kind of remind you like hey you know like if you're gonna be a media page you yep. know at least understand like what it comes with it if you're siding with different people and all that too because 
nowadays too with uh, media, because either you're going to side with one thing too, or you're just going to be, you know, unilateral and all that too, you know, you're yeah. working with everyone too. And I think you have to realize like what you're putting out out there and all that too. Like if you're only putting stuff that's going to be like negative too and all that, there's going to be a negative connotation uh, to exactly. it too. Like even with that whole shooting, I mean, with other pages, you know, yeah, like yo. let's say like um, a We Live uh, Hip Hop and all yeah. that too, or a Shifter Magazine, you know, it kind of depends on like what they're going to put out. Is it going to be positive? Is it going to be... Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, That's why I said like not all of them, right? Not all of them are putting on like, are not are like, well, like I said, not all of them are doing what I was saying, but there are, there, there's a few that are, have a good following and obviously those ones, sometimes they, they might accidentally or I don't know what it is, but might misconstrue stories and that causes a lot of that causes more politics because remember the net is huge. The social aspect of the Toronto politics scene is endless. Yeah. Like yo, everyone talks about it. Yeah. It's like, yo, you go to anyone that's from Toronto and you start talking to them about any artist, they talk about the politics with yeah, it. Exactly. You're not going to get the artist and talk about straight just as music by itself. Yeah, you're going to uh -huh. get backstories of stories. Or you're going to get, it's just, it's just how it is again, Toronto. Yeah, so again, pushing like pushing good music and pushing different music yeah, is man. what we're trying to do. Right. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, like for the blog pages, yo, keep six of them. They were uh, like rest, yo, like like, like I feel bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like man. that's 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 ridiculous. Like no blog pages should be even like getting touched to begin with. Yeah. They're just they're putting on a platform. They're just yeah. they're helping us. Yeah, I mean, and it kind of depends too, because like uh, I'm even reading Torontology too and all that, and like people are asking, Hey, what could keep six uh, do next to kinda like put on for the scene? Should he stay in his lane? Should they do something else too? And like a lot of this uh, other stuff too. It's just kind of knowing what you could do next and all that too. And like, that, yeah, that's the thing is even, but yo, like again, like, like you said, staying in your lane, right? Like even staying in your lane fam can get pretty hefty sometimes. Dog. It, it, you, as much as you're staying in your lane, you're, you're kind yeah. of veering <laughs> off too. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you we don't even know it, but yeah, the people yeah. you're around, whether you're surrounding yourself yeah. with the wrong people, yeah. that people, that other people that you know, that yeah. don't rock with, you're already messing up right there and you're kind of hindering. Yeah. Your, your your lifespan yeah, reality yeah. because you know exactly it's just like too. And you're putting yourself in situations where reality is it's like even if you don't know it's just better off to well, people that are so associated with what's going on right now just kind of like as a blog page especially just kind of yeah, focus man. more on the music yeah. aspect or not so much on the political you know like I feel that just like on the opportunities like you know yeah. doing charity work and all that too you know what I'm saying or yo, like working with other artists too I mean Toronto yeah. Rap Stars is doing it right now the like shout out to them yeah. um you know, Shifter Magazine, they're doing that too. Like, like C6 I'm, Buzz, uh, Keep 6 Solid, um, Straight uh, Out the 6. Real like, New, Toronto News Real and all news that. Tour, yeah, uh, like, they're not, like, bro, they're not in tune with what's going on in the next gen. Like, yo, I'm sorry to say it, but, like, I, yo, I grew up listening to Toronto hip-hop, okay? All types yeah. of artists, yeah, okay? Man. From, from like, every part of Toronto. So, right now, there's not really anyone right now, like, to really put out because it's unfortunate but some of them are locked and some of them have passed away and yeah. it's like the generation of the good music that was with the Toronto scene is kind of fading away yeah, exactly. and it's like it's like people are now more focusing on the, the fuckery and all that yeah, yeah. 100% too nah no, I mean we have Bushman we have Chromas we yeah. have um, who else Gustavo Guapo and all yeah. that too um, I mean Free and French Roadrunner but yeah. like where can it go from there and all that too? Uh, like, like, look at, like, see, unfortunately, like, yo, shout out uh, Roadrunner. He's really doing his thing right now. Yo, he's putting on, he's doing shows. Unfortunately, you know, like, I, I seen on a blog page, that's how I heard about it, that um one of his, one of I think one of his closest brothers yeah. had recently passed away, unfortunately. Yeah. And that, to me, was just like, I pretty much was tuned in with Roadrunner from the beginning. So, that yeah. person I've seen, yeah. like, from the beginning, he was with Roadrunner. And that's, like, to think about it, like, me as an artist, like, yeah. my homies are, like, my closest dog. You know, God forbid, you know, like, and it's it's sad yeah. because, fuck, like, yeah, man. But, um, Likewise, I, I hope he really, like, he keeps pushing, though. He keeps pushing the music. I hope he doesn't go nowhere because yeah. he's a sick artist, man. He's yeah, really man. doing it. He's doing it. And, I mean, right now with Rolling Loud, too, like, they're not coming to Toronto anymore because they're making uh, Miami, I think, uh, their uh, last uh, date for the year for yeah. Rolling Loud and all that, too. So do you think, you know, Toronto dropped the ball for Rolling Loud to ever come back and all that? Um, I don't feel that they've totally closed the door, but I mean, in a way they did. So I can, I can't disagree with you on that. I can only half disagree and just say yeah. that maybe they'll come back. Yeah. And, if they do, man, 
I would love to def. I would love to be a yeah, part man. of it. I would. It would be an honor to yeah, be a man. part of it and definitely express my talent and show off to the people another another genre of Toronto, another yeah, side man. of Toronto. You feel me? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, likewise yo. too. You know. Um, I always say this for every other artist, you know, starting this year, I kind of did this too. Yeah. Like name free songs in your catalog that you'd like to recommend for people that want to check out that haven't heard for you for like the very first time and all that, you know? Uh, yo, check Bomb Bomb Bomb. I didn't even think, I don't even think I ran through the rundown of that one, actually. That was yeah, one of the I, tracks I didn't get through. Uh, But yo, if you want to tap in with me, that's the track right there. Bomb Bomb Bomb. It's uh, got the B2K sample. You know what I'm saying? We got that all dealt with in the back, in the back side of things. We got that all dealt with. And yo... That's right now. It's one of the most booming tracks right now. Like on my on my uh, Spotify. Like yo, when you tap on my page, that's usually the first one that comes up. Everyone's bumping it, and people are rocking with it because it's got the old school B two K sample, but it's got like the it's got a Toronto U K Latin drill. You know what I'm saying? So it's like whoa, it's yeah. a crazy combination, and people don't see that very often, and that's why people are rocking with it. So yo, if you want to tap in with me and uh, kind of start listening to whatever I got going on, you guys could definitely check out the first one I'd recommend for you would be Bomb Bomb Bomb. After that, listen to if they ask who it was. Because you know why BA did it first. You feel me? But yeah. Not true. And uh, what's uh, next uh, for you right now? I mean, you're going to be performing uh, for like Millie's and all that too. Like opening up for him. And also Dave East, uh, like in August and all that too. But uh, what's uh, next uh, for you right now? As for August 4th, it's my next uh, big event. It's uh, Dave East. Dave East is coming to Canada for the first time. He's actually, he's on, he's on a whole tour. He's on a whole tour. He's going to be going to Kitchener as well. He's going everywhere, dog. So I got lucky enough to actually be opening up for the Toronto, straight in the heart of the city, in my city. And I'm going to open it up. I'm going to turn it up again and do what we always do, man. Have the crowd on their feet with their arms in the air. And yo, have a good ass night and meet new people and connect with all new people and just boom, you know? That's what's up. But um, other than that, I think I told you earlier, if uh, if they ask who it was, music video coming soon. You know what I'm saying? Actually, really soon. Um, and I think uh, what move your hips, uh, right? Or yeah, move uh, move your hips is that that that's a that's a that's gonna be coming just now too. That's um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna set up that music video properly. It's gonna be a good rollout plan. It's gonna be a well executed track and music video. And yo, it's gonna be it's gonna be sick. So keep an eye open for those two. And um, again, possible EP real soon. Looking into the next, you know, next month or two. So make sure you guys keep your eyes open for that because that's new music gonna be out. And little singles will come here out here and there. And I'll make sure you guys stay tapped in on my IG and all my socials because that's where everything gets dropped. And I make sure that you know all my shit and all my uh, all my music and everything is well organized. So you guys could tap in my link, and it's all there, man. Yeah, my YouTube channel. Subscribe. You know what I'm saying? It's not a big following, but yo, we can make it a big following. We get this movement popping, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, again, uh, YouTube channel's there. And man, yeah, that's that's really that's really what it is, man. I'm just going to keep on pushing. Going to keep yeah, on pushing. Likewise. And do you have any closing remarks you'd like to say? Shit. Um, yeah, dog. To be honest, if you an artist in the city and you coming up, shit, dog. No, like, I ain't even going to put any, like, you know, I'm not going to go behind the bushes. It's just, Keep doing you. Keep doing you and don't stop. And like I said earlier, don't let no one tell you you can't do shit because, yo, man, you can really do it if you put your heart and your soul into it and you really like have dedication. So anyone that's coming up in the city that's thinking about doing music or any type of music aspect, engineer, producing, yeah. whatever it is, dog, you have it. You just got to show yourself and show the people and just keep on pushing. And that's what's up. Likewise. And for anyone else, if you guys don't know where I'm at right now, Lens of Yashu interview. You don't know what it is. I appreciate the man them for yeah. having me out here. You know what I'm saying, broski? Big ups to you, doggy. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? I got my man behind the camera. So shout out to you, bro, bro. Yeah, man. And yo, shout out again, you guys, man. Because this is a platform right here to get people to know what's up with me. So thank you, guys. Yeah, you man. know what I'm saying? And I appreciate it. And all my supporters, I love each and every one of you guys. YBA ain't going nowhere, man. Promise yeah, you that. Man. More shit coming this year and a lot more to come. Choo -choo. I'm 21 years old right now. Young. So, yo, we got a long journey. Yeah, man. And me? YBA from the Jane on all platforms, right? Yeah, that YBA from the Jane, man. You know what I'm saying? Straight from the Jane. Born and raised. And we just spreading positivity. Yeah, Straight man. positivity and good music for the clubs and all that, man. So, let's get it popping. Hope to see you guys at my shows. 
And yo, make sure you guys follow and tap in with Lens of Yashu because they be putting out a platform and shit for all these artists out in the city right now coming up. Yeah, man. Thank you guys again, man. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, man. Let's get it. You know, it's definitely self-explanatory. Episode 42, Tilo White Talks. Josh, also known as Yashu, Lens of Yashu, signing off, you know? Bow. <laughs>